Good morning and welcome to Christian Life Center's Sunday service. I'm Pastor Kareem, your host for today, and I'm so excited that you're joining with us this morning. If this is your first time tuning in, we want to extend a warm welcome to you. If you could do us a favor and text the word GUEST to 905-686-1411. We would love to get to know you a little bit more and send you a little thank you gift for joining us today. We also want to connect and interact with all of you joining us online. So please don't be shy and use the live chat to say hi, tell us where you're joining us from, ask questions if you're not quite understanding something, and just engage with each other in this real-time chat. If you're joining us in person, a couple of housekeeping rules for today's service. Please keep your mask on for the duration of your time in the building. And remember to enter the sanctuary through the middle doors only. And when leaving or heading to the washrooms, please use the side doors of the sanctuary. As our capacity numbers increase, please be sure to sit starting from the farthest uh, end of the row, leaving at least two seats between you and the next family to make it easier for our ushers to seat as many people as possible while maintaining social distancing. All right, it's time to enter into our time of musical worship. So get ready with an expectant heart to receive whatever Holy Spirit has in store for you today. So are you ready? All right, let's worship together. See you in a few. There we go, there we go. Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing? Are you guys excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I mean, a few of them over here sound like they're excited. What about everybody else? You guys excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Guys, I don't know about you, but I truly am excited. I know that's something that maybe, you know, you would think that that's something we're supposed to say, but I'm not just saying it to say it. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And so I'm expecting God to move in a powerful way this morning. How about y'all? Are you expecting God to move in your lives this morning? So here's how we do that. We literally take this time and say, this is not even about us. It's all about him. And so everything that we're gonna do this morning, it's gonna be to exalt him, it's going to be to lift him up, it's going to just give him all that is due unto him. And so I'm just gonna commit this service to him right now, and we're just gonna say, Lord, have your way. And so Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, the privilege that we have to know you, to serve you, to be able to come and gather in this way so we can worship you, Lord. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, as we do that, Lord, that you are faithful to move in powerful ways. And so, Lord, we commit this time to you. We say, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Why don't you stand with me? We're going to worship, but as we worship this morning, we have communion. So for those who are watching online, if you want to grab your communion cup, your juice, and your wafer or cracker or bread or whatever you want to grab, we're going to be having communion this morning. And so let's worship.
splendor holy holy Lord and gentle love calling me closer still closer still the saints and the elders in glory is sung and the praises they sing never seem to get old and i'll stay here forever singing just get you to be seated for a moment and if you have your communion I want you to just grab their communion and just get it ready but I just want to say something Matthew, as Jesus dies, we, we take communion because we celebrate the death of Jesus on the cross. But in Matthew chapter 27, it says this, and here's some of the things that we forget. It says, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. But here's the thing. 
There was a time that there was the temple, and in the temple you had the veil. And there were different sections that allowed different people to come in at certain places. And one place was where the veil was, on the other side was the Holy of Holies, where the temple, um, where the Ark of God was. And where the Ark of God was, only the holy, the high priest could go in and enter and be in that presence of God. But Jesus did something when he died on the cross. When he died on the cross, it says immediately, the veil was torn in two. And what that did was it opened the door so that we would no longer be hidden, no, we would no longer be separate, but that he allows us to come right into his throne room. He allows us to be right face to face with him. And so as we take communion this morning, as we do the things that God has asked us to do, I just want you to remember the fact that now we have that face to face encounter with God. We have that face to face encounter with Jesus. That we don't have to say to a priest, can you go before and make the sacrifice and make the altar. Jesus was that ultimate sacrifice. And because that sacrifice was for us, it allows us to go straight to the Father, to go straight to Jesus. And so if you have your, your communion little tables there, your communion cups and the bread, I want you to take the bread right now, the little wafer. Those at home, if you have bread, you can take the bread. And the scriptures tell us that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the cup and the bread. He took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. This was, was broken for you. Take and eat. So let's take and eat right now. Just begin to thank him for his body being broken for you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, God. After breaking the bread, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which was shed for you. Take and drink as often as you remember me. And so I want you to take the cup right now and let's drink. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's continue to worship right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, God. Oh, you are worthy, God. You are worthy, Jesus. We honor you today. Why don't you stand with us as we continue to sing and worship? Hallelujah, Jesus. You are faithful, God. You are faithful, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The veil is torn, the doors fling wide. I see glory as I run inside your throne. Before you, I bow. Oh, yes, oh God. The veil is torn, and the doors fling wide. I see glory. I run inside your throne room before you. I bow, oh yes, oh God. The veil is torn and the doors fling wide. I see glory as I run inside your throne room before you. I bow.
glorious splendor you are you are and you'll be forever the king enthroned in glorious splendor you are you are and you'll be forever the king enthroned in glorious splendor holy holy on the throne, oh God. Nothing can dethrone you, Jesus. Oh, your cross sealed the victory, oh God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, you conquer death in the grave. You conquer death in the grave. Hallelujah, Jesus. fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will see of the goodness of God amen and all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you are. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I have made, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. For oh, your goodness, Lord. the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God for oh, you yeah.
to worship with church. He's been good to us. It's running after me. Your goodness is running now. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running now. It's running after me. Sing that again. Your goodness is running now. It's running after me. Your goodness is running now. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running now. It's running after me. I hope you understand that this morning, church. Psalm 23 says, goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. It is running after you. It is coming for you. In scripture, that, that, the words actually mean like a, a pack of wild dogs hunting after its prey. He is searching rapidly after you to bless you with goodness and mercy. And so understand that this morning. He is a faithful and good and awesome God. And so as we go to prayer this morning, before we go to prayer, I want you to just begin to lift your voice. I know we say that often, but how much more can we just say to God we love him? You know, the amount of worship is not even makes a dent in how much we can be thankful to God for. And we will be in heaven for all of our days praising him, so why don't we practice here? So before I pray, take a few moments right now. I, I want you, if you feel comfortable, lift your hands towards heaven. Begin to just give him your praise and your honor because he's worthy. Jesus. Father, we don't apologize for worshiping you. We will be worshiping you for all of our days, and so we take the time right now to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. You are faithful, Jesus. 
You are the king above all kings. And as we reflect today on what you did on the cross, we are grateful because we were all sinners. We are all sinners saved by the grace of the living God. And so, Lord, we thank you that your cross provided a way of escape for us, a way where we could run into wholeness, a way where we are covered by righteousness, not by righteousness that we make of our own, but because of your blood that you shed for us. We are seen as righteous in front of the Father. And so we thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. We thank you for all that you're doing. And so, Lord, for people who have come into this place that are looking for needs, looking for you to do something, I pray that their focus would be on you. Their would be, focus would be on the King of kings and the Lord of lords, knowing that as they focus on you, all the earth, things of earth will go strangely dim that all the things around us, the situations won't matter because our focus is on you and not on our problems. And so, Lord, whether it's financial needs, we look to you. Whether it's health, we look to you. Whether it's relationships, we look to you. Because you have the cure. You have the results. You have the answers for all things. And so, God, we continue to worship you. In spirit and in truth, we continue to say thank you. Our hearts are overwhelmed by your love for us because you first loved us. May we always remember that, that you always found us first. You revealed yourself and we ran into your arms. And so I pray that we would continue to run into your arms. Every day that we wake up, we would continue to run into your arms. Because that's where our safety is. That's where our joy is. That's where our hope is. And so we honor you right now. We worship you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Isn't the Lord good? Amen. Well, we want to welcome you this morning to Christian Life Center. Obviously, we can't greet by shaking of hands and doing those things. But you can turn around and let's wave to a neighbor around you. Welcome them in the house of the Lord, and then you may be seated as we go to announcements. Hey CLC, Pastor Cream here again with this week's announcements. As you may be aware, new guidelines now allow us to have larger numbers again as long as we continue to socially distance. With that being said, we are going to gradually increase our numbers each week and properly assess how many people we can have safely. Please know that we're doing our best to stay in the loop with everything going on com and comply with provincial guidelines, and most importantly, to honor God in everything that we do. So from the bottom of our hearts, thanks for being so gracious with us as we figure things out. If you would like to join us in person, please head to our website under the event registration tab to let us know you'll be coming. If you're unable to make it to in-person services, we will still be offering our live stream service. We encourage you to worship wherever you feel comfortable. Have you ever been interested in getting involved in the creative arts at the church? To learn to play an instrument, sing, or learn to be a sound engineer, we have something just for you. Starting the week of August 8th, we will be starting our School of the Arts. So if you're interested, you can visit our website and register by clicking the event registration tab. And, but if you want more information about it, we have many brochures at our welcome desk. As mentioned, for those of you, and this is your first time, firstly, thank you. We are so glad that you decided to join us. Secondly, if you don't mind, would you please take a moment to grab your phone and text the word guest to our church number, which is 905-686-1411. This gives us an opportunity to know more about you, to learn how we can connect with you and serve you. You can also text the word prayer to that same number if you have any prayer needs. No formal offering will be taken during this time. However, there are still several ways to give your regular tithes and offering. You can text the word give to 905-686-1411 Visit our website, www.christianlifecenter.ca, and click the Donate tab. Send an email money transfer to life at christianlifecenter.ca. Mail in a check to 1030 Ravenscroft Road, Ajax, Ontario, L1T4R9, or you can drop your envelope off at our mailbox at the front entrance. Unfortunately, our debit machines will not be available at this time. 
Also a reminder to please keep our missionaries in mind and prayerfully consider adding a donation to help support them as they help to spread the gospel globally. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel so you never miss any of our Reset for Life videos, our Sunday services, missionary reports, or our Kids Zone Church at Home videos. Also, we encourage you to follow CLC or any of our ministries on Instagram or Facebook to stay in the loop with what's going on around here. If social media isn't your thing, feel free to send an email to life at christianlifecenter.ca if you'd like to receive our weekly email updates as well. That's it for today. I'm Pastor Kareem, and those were this week's announcements. The last few weeks, and so there was another one that came. We have a lot of kids that were born during COVID, I'm telling you. And so Abigail and Yemi um, Awuso Salami, they had a little girl on June 1st, Hananiah. And so there's four other names that I'm, I cannot pronounce, and I don't want to butcher it, but I, re- I know the first name, Hananiah Salami. And so we want to thank you for letting us know, and let's just give a round of applause once again. <laughs> and if there's more babies, let us know, because we, we need to be celebrating things in this season. Amen. And that is something to celebrate. And so, without further ado, we have Pastor Kareem. He's going to be bringing the word this morning. So all our life, you have been faithful. I'm not the best singer, but I'm singing to my Lord. All my life, you have been so, so good. Yeah. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on. Are you guys ready for the word this morning? Yes. Come on, are you guys ready for the word this morning? Yes. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and let him know, I am so excited to hear God's word this morning. Yes. Turn to your other neighbor and tell him, you are my second choice, forgive me, but I just wanted to let you know <laughs> that I'm so excited to hear God's word this morning. Come on. So we are going to go to Mark chapter 5. We're going to be reading verses 21 to 24, and then we're going to jump to verses 35 to 42. And so if you want to get your Bibles out, you can do that at this time. I'll give you some time. Once you get there, just give a little wave or maybe yell out amen. If you're not there, just tell me, hold up, hold up, and I'll wait. Amen. 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 All right, here we go. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 24, and then verses 35 to 42. Here's what it says. And when had crossed again in in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, my little death, come lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. Skipping to verse 35. It says, while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter's dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? He said, I'm just going to switch to the mic. Okay. All right. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not only believe 
And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James, John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother, those who were with him, and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talithi, Talitha Kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age, and they were immediately overcome with amazement. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can put our trust in your word. And Lord, as we unpack your word this morning, would you allow it to come alive? In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, what are some of your favorite foods to eat? Shout it out. I'm giving you guys the opportunity. Let's just respond. What is, what's your favorite food to eat when you go out? What's one of your favorite foods? Roti. Roti. What else? What is that? Pizza. Pizza. Uh, Swiss chalet. Okay, what else? What else? Aki and Saltfish. What else? Calamari. Calamari. What else? Steak. Steak. I'm going to stop right there because that's my favorite. I was waiting for that one. Round of applause for the person who chose steak. Amazing. Great pick. That's what I wanted to hear. Steak. I really love a good steak. I don't get it often because obviously it's a little costly. But there are times when I'm craving it, and it's like a huge craving for where I say to myself... I need a good steak right now. Like, I may not have the money right now, but I'm going to put that aside because I want a steak. It doesn't matter what's, what it's going to cost. You know, what I have to do to get myself to get that steak, I'm going to get that steak because I recognize that I need it. Sorry, or want it. <laughs> Thanks for correcting me, guys. Thank you. Want it. Right. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation like that? You know, you know there's something that you want, and you're willing to do whatever it's going to take to get it. That's what's happening in the story with Jairus. He's in a situation right now where his daughter is dying. And he's willing to do whatever it's going to take to see her be healed. And so what does he do? He leaves. He leaves his home, and he goes to find Jesus. See, he's been hearing all the great things that this man named Jesus has been doing. And he says, I need to to meet this man. He was desperate. Absolutely desperate. Pastor Andrew last week talked about that, how we have to be a people that are desperate to see God move in our lives. And this is where Jairus was. He was desperate. And so for some of you, even right now, you're desperate too. You're looking at situations and circumstances in your life, and you look rather dire. And you don't know what you're going to do, but you know something has to be done. You may have a family member who's sick, or you need a new job. Or you have a family friend who doesn't know the Lord and you want them to know the Lord. But you're looking at the situation and you're like, I don't know if it's going to happen. The title of my message this morning is this. Are you hungry or are you hangry? I'll say one more time. Are you hungry or are you hangry? The difference between being hungry and being hangry is when you are hungry, it is your body telling you that, you that it needs food, but it needs the proper food to satisfy that hunger. When you are hangry, it's being hungry and angry at the same time, and your emotions get in the way of you thinking logically and making the right decision while waiting in the process of satisfying that hunger. When you are hungry, you have a choice to do what is needed to make the right decision to satisfy that craving. But oftentimes what we do is we shortchange ourselves. Instead of getting the thing that's going to actually satisfy us and and help us to to do what we need for our lives in that moment, we like to shortchange ourselves. 
Jairus is hungry to see his daughter be healed. And he knows what he needs to have her healed. In order for her to be healed, what he, the conclusion that he's come to is he has to meet Jesus. Again, he's heard about this man, Jesus, and all the miracles that he's been doing. And so Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 23, it says this, And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers, this is Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at point of death. Come lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Some of us, we're going through circumstances, situations, and we're not acting like Jairus. We're operating out of being hangry, maybe, where we're not thinking and recognizing what it is gonna, that's going to actually help us to satisfy whatever it is that we're going through. I can tell you so many times, even when I'm just hungry, just putting the analogy together, I get hungry, and then I get hangry, and then I stop thinking logically, and then I'll go to McDonald's, thinking that that's going to satisfy me. And then I get there and I eat the McDonald's and I, McDonald's and I realize that it's just rental food. Comes in and out. <laughs> doesn't satisfy. But so many times we do the same thing when it comes to a situation. Instead of going to the one who can take care of the need, we like to go to and do our own thing. We're not thinking logically. We're not thinking out of hunger for him. We're getting hangry over the situation. And we're magnifying the situation rather than magnifying him. What we need to know in every single circumstance and situation that we're feeling, we going through, we need to go to the one that can truly satisfy, the one that can truly make a way, and that is found in Jesus, which leads me to my first point. We need to go to the one who can truly satisfy what it is that, that we are hungry for. Jairus is a synagogue leader, and he doesn't want any Band-Aid solutions. He doesn't want a rental situation. He wants his issue to be rectified. Have you ever been hungry? Instead of waiting, you take a shortcut. Instead of going to Jesus, you start going to maybe your brother or your sister. And yes, your brother and sister might be great people, but they're not Jesus. You ever been in a situation, rather than even go about from talking to some people that have wisdom, you go to your own logic thinking that you know what's best to overcome the obstacle, to overcome the circumstance. You haven't even consulted God. And while you're not consulting God, what do you end up doing? You get, instead of hungry for him, you get hangry. As if it's him who's causing you not to be able to get through the circumstance of the situation. Jairus is not letting that happen for him. He wants a solution. And he knows that that solution is found in Jesus. And he literally begs. He gets in front of Jesus, and he's begging and imploring, Jesus, help me with my my daughter. How many of us, when we're going through a situation, are getting to this place where we humble ourselves, we lowly ourselves, so that he can be exalted? Jairus recognized that that's the posture that he needed to take. Remember, he was a synagogue leader. He was a leader before people. And everybody else looks at him as a, you know, big man on campus at the synagogue. But this big man on campus realized who's the biggest man of all. And he goes to him and says, Jesus, help me. Too many of us allow ourselves to get hangry, but we need to operate out of hunger. When you remain in a hunger state, you allow yourself to make the right rational decisions to satisfy that hunger. And so Jairus does that. But then the story continues to go on, and Pastor Andrew spoke on it last week. And so now he gets Jesus, and they're on the way back to his house. 
to have his daughter be healed. And I want you to understand what's taking place. So he's leaving. Jesus is leaving with them. But Jesus, because he's just doing his thing and everybody's loving him, a whole crowd of people are following. There's no social distancing happening. And so he's going, he's going. And, and you can imagine that Jairus is like, oh, Jesus, come on, come on. Gee, we got to, my daughter, my daughter's going to. And then Jesus does the craziest thing in that moment. He literally stops. Jesus stops. And the reason why he stops is because there was somebody, they didn't even touch him, touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus stops. Stops everything that he was doing, knowing that he was on the way to be able to heal his daughter. And Jesus stops. And could you just imagine Jairus over here like, this, this guy, did this guy, really? And in that moment, again, he had the opportunity either to continue to operate out of hunger for Jesus to do what he wanted, needed to do, or get hangry. But what does Jairus do? I know on the inside he's probably like, man, Jesus, what are you doing? And I'm not, I'm saying, I'm not saying it in vain. This is actually what he's saying. Jesus, come on, let's go. But he waits. How many of us, even when we sense that God is about to make a way, he's taking the steps towards that breakthrough for us. How many of us, we get, we, we move past being hunger for Jesus moving in our lives to where we get hangry. And instead of doing what Jairus did, we say, forget this guy. I'm just going to try to do this on my own. <laughs> I can remember times thinking about when I've gone to restaurants. And this is a side note, going to a restaurant. Just guys, help me out here. Help me with this one. Can somebody help me understand this, Okay. When I go to a restaurant, they have these people called waiters. Everybody know waiters? So I go to a restaurant. I meet this person who's called a waiter. Actually, I don't even get to see. I have to wait before I can meet the waiter. Then the waiter helps me, brings me to my table. And then again, I wait to get a beverage or to put in my order. Then I put in my order. The waiter goes back. I wait for my food. And then the waiter comes and brings me the food. And then when I'm done my food and I want to pay and get out of there, I have to wait again for the waiter to bring me my bail. The question that I have for you guys is a side note. Why do they have the audacity to call them waiters? <laughs> I'm the one waiting through the whole process. But again, in the moment, when we're in that moment, I have the choice. Listen, I want to eat what I'm about to eat. I want to get what's going to hunger and satisfy me. And so what do I do in recognizing this? I wait. And then get to my table, and I know I, I want this food, and so I, I want to make sure I get the right thing. So I look, and I take that time, and I pick the food, and then I order it, and they bring it back in that time. I wait. And then this is one of the most important parts. I've eaten the food. I want to pay and get out of there. So I wait. Because I understand how important it is. But so many of us are not willing to wait. We're not willing to wait and get what we need. We'll rush the process. Some of us are going to leave the restaurant. Some of us are in a circumstance, a situation where you've literally, that's what you've been doing. You've left, you've left the situation, the circumstance, and said, I'm over it. And I strongly believe that the Lord is saying to you, and you know who you are, just wait. Just wait. Point number two says, recognize that anything really good is worth waiting for. Somebody say he's worth the wait. 
Come on, say he's worth the wait. Jairus had just rushed to get Jesus and wants to get home as soon as possible because he knows he doesn't have much time. And he's fearing that if he doesn't get there in time, it will be too late. And knowing this, Jesus still has him wait. And Jesus has him wait and then continues to have him wait and then continues to have him wait. And then he gets news that he didn't want to hear. Mark chapter 5, 35 says, while he was speaking, this is Jesus speaking. There came from the ruler's house, this is Jairus' house, some who said, your daughter, Jairus, your daughter, she's dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Some people come to him and there is, and they're like, Jairus, it's too late. People come to him. People that he's close to, they say, Jairus, it's too late. Jairus, you know what? Don't even bother Jesus anymore. It's too late. Let Jesus go back and do what he's doing because, Jairus, it's too late. Let's just go back. Let's be with your daughter. More the loss of your daughter. But I love the next part. (laughs) Verse 36. But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear. Only believe. Say one more time. What does he say? Do not fear. Only believe. Come on. Come on. Point number three, through the midst of adversity, continue to wait and trust in Jesus. There is light at the end of this tunnel. It may be dark right now. It may look like you can't see what's at the end. But Jesus says, do not fear. Yes, it's dark. It may be scary right now. But wait. Do not fear. The one who has a family member who is sick right now. Continue to wait. Do not fear. The one who knows that they have a family member that is far from God. Maybe getting drunk every other night. Sleeping with that person and that person. Just wait. Do not fear. And then he says, and believe. And believe. Believe that the same person who was able to die and be resurrected back to life, he'll make a way. The same one who you watch other people get healings, you've watched other people see provision happen, that same God can happen to move in your life if you just wait. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, just wait and trust. Come on, turn to your other neighbor and say it like you believe it. Just wait and trust. (laughs) Jesus is like, stop listening to these simple-minded people. Stop listening to the haters. Stop listening to the people that really don't know what they're talking about. They may seem like they know, but they don't know. And he goes on in verse 37 to 40, and he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And we had ent- when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and he went in where the child was. Okay, last point I'm going to say to you, and this is really crucial in my opinion. 
Last point is recognize the certain things that got to go. Jesus comes there. First is a group of people tell him, don't even bother. Jesus said, yo, don't listen to those people. Then he gets to the house, and there's a bunch of people that are crying and making a whole heap of commotion. And he tells them, why are you crying? She's just sleeping. And this is the the craziest part. They're talking to Jesus. (laughs) Listen to what they do next. They're talking to Jesus, and what do they do? Jesus tells them they're just sleeping, and what do they do? They laugh. They laugh at Jesus. How many people in your life are laughing at you when you say that God's going to move in a supernatural way in your life? How many people, when you declare the goodness of God, look at you and turn to you and say, I hear what you're saying, but (laughs) that's a good one. It's not going to happen. And Jesus in that moment, you know what he does? He says, you get out, you get out, you get out. All of you get out right now so that I can move in the way that I need to move. You are a hindrance to what God wants to do in this moment. So again, last point, recognize those that got to go, those that got to leave, those that are not a part of the process. Get them out. Not just people. Get every thought that's not of God. Get it out. Everything of the past, get it out. Anything that is not of God, get it out. Why? So he can now move. He says to them, you got to go. And he puts them out of the house. And then he does what he needs to do. He takes her by the hand and says to her, Talitha Kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately what happens? The girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age, and they were immediately overcome with amazement. Jairus recognized where he needed to go. He wasn't going to operate out of being hangry or anything like that, so he goes to Jesus. He gets to Jesus. He lowlies himself before the man of God. He takes him with him, and then Jesus has him wait, and what does he do? He waits. He gets to where he's going, and on the way there, as people tell him, don't even bother, then he gets there, and as people are saying that she's dead, and what does he do? He doesn't listen to them. In fact, he allows Jesus to lead, and he says, they all get out. And then he gets to verse 41. And he gets to see this miracle. He gets to see his little daughter, who was dead. Take it in, guys. Dead, had no life, had no pulse. People are looking at her. They're they're getting ready to bury her. What are you going through right now? where you're looking at it and you're thinking it is dead. There's no coming back from this. Even the living God can't actually move in this situation. How many of us have been telling ourselves that in this season? And really what we need to do is stop acting out of being hangry and be hungry for the living God and knowing what he can do in our lives. So many of us miss out on being able to see these type of miracles. Why? Because instead of posturing ourselves in the same way Jairus did along this story, we do our own thing. And because of that, we don't get to experience real growth. One last thing. Can you guys just help me with the table? One quick illustration. You know I wasn't going to leave you without doing one illustration, right, guys? The blue here represents, you know, us being blue and 
looking at our circumstance, situation. And here's the thing about it. In life, we're going to go through trials and tribulations. That's a part of life. It's going to be, we're going to have blue moments. It's going to happen. We will face trials and tribula- tribulations. We will face hard times. So that's the blue. The yellow represents the light of God. The light. I know light's more like a fluorescent, but just bear with me. The, the light. And here's the thing. The green represents growth. Think about plants, that type of thing. Growth. And God wants us to grow. And what we don't realize is these trials and tribulations, instead of depending and, and, and being engulfed and being hangry in this moment, where God wants to take us is to here. But oftentimes we like to remain here as if God can't move in our lives. And so rather than depend on him, we want to depend on ourselves in the moment. And we want to get all engulfed in this and think about this and magnify the circumstance of the situation rather than magnify God. And what God wants to say, stop depending on yourself in the circumstance and allow me to come in. And what ends up happening is we get to experience growth and more growth than the person next to us. Stop being hangry and hunger for him. Worship team, if you can help me out. We serve a good God. God that wants to move in our lives powerfully. But we got to allow him to do it. Stop leaning on our own understanding. Or those around us. To continue to focus on the goodness of God in all the days of our lives. He is a good God. Church, He's a good God. And so we're going to sing that song one last time. I want to encourage you you, you, you know the circumstance, situation that some of you guys may be going through. Stop focusing on the situation and start focusing on what you can have through Him. Magnify him. Don't magnify the situation. Look to him. Depend on him, not on the people around you. And I'm trusting and believing that God will move in a powerful, powerful way. You know why I trust and believe in that? Because he's done it in the past. And he can do it again. And then when he does it again, he'll do it again. And then when you go through another trial of tribulation, and you need him to move, he'll do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, as long as we depend on him and not on our own strength. So Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what we have in you as we depend on you. We recognize your goodness to us, your faithfulness to us, and we're not going to look at the things or the people around us, we're going to focus our attentions on you, in Jesus' name.
love your voice. Yeah. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I will sing in the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord. That every word that you say is yes and amen. Yeah. And so I pray that we would be sealed in your word. We would be sealed in our hope that you are the God that will come through. That we will wait for those things that we know that you poured on our hearts. Those things that we're looking for breakthrough through. We thank you that you are an on-time God. Yeah. That you are never late. That you are never uh, uh, delayed. But you know when you're going to come. And so, Lord, we wait. We stand in that moment and we say, God, we will follow you. We will obey you. I pray you would help us to push those distractions out of our way. Those things that are stopping us from believing that you can do the impossible. For those people in our lives that try to might bring negativity or things, I pray, Lord God, that our eyes will be focused on you. That we would be surrounded with other believers that will agree in prayer and walk with us to see you move mountains in Jesus' name. And so as we go from this place, I pray that our hearts would be filled that we would be filled with excitement and expectation, knowing that you are going to do what you say you will do, that you will be the faithful God that we know that you are. And so, Lord, we know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
Hallelujah. So not our will be done, your will be done. Yes, Lord. Let your kingdom come here now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Isn't the Lord good today, church? Amen. Let's give a clap off for the Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to end the service this morning and if you want, as we say always, if you can go through the side doors, and we're going to start from the back road to the front, and you can make your way out to the back doors. And so we want us to thank you for being here this morning with us and those watching online, and we will see you next week. Amen. Hope you enjoyed today's service. What were some takeaways that stuck out to you? What's one or two things you're going to do or change this week to apply this word to your everyday life? Do you have questions or are you ready to accept Jesus into your heart? We would love to connect with you and walk you through all of this. Comment in the live chat, send us an email to life at christianlifecenter.ca or text faith or prayer to 905-686-1411. If you're joining us online, we want to strongly encourage you to join us in person next week. If you feel comfortable, we want you to know that we are doing our very best here at CLC to make this place a safe space. So we would love to have you. So head to www.christianlifecenter.ca and under the event registration tab and, and let us know that you're coming. Also, don't forget, if you have any questions about today's service or have any prayer requests, please text the word faith or prayer to our church number so one of our pastors can touch base with you this week. And if you're interested in one of our School of the Arts courses, remember, registration is now open. Until next time, CLC family, have a great week.